I'm John Walmsley. I find myself moderating uh, a bunch of panels this year on digital health, and uh, we also have uh, a lot of conversations internally about uh, the implications of all the changes that we're seeing in recent years and likely to see in years to come. And we just thought it would be interesting to, uh, to have some of that conversation uh, on camera. Um, digital health, what does it, it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people, to us. It means connecting your medical device to the network to gain all the benefits uh, that come from that. Um, in this conversation, we're going to talk about it, uh, advantages and motivations, as well as some of the challenges, which can be both technical and regulatory, given this is medical devices. Uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to ask Scott Phillips, our founder and president. Scott uh, talks to a lot of people uh, who are wrestling with these challenges as they look to build their companies. And uh, Scott, do you have some uh, thoughts on, on the motivations for connecting your device? I would like to draw a distinction between those companies that are focused on clinical use in an in a institutional setting and, or, and those ones that are to be used at home. But to start with, the clinical applications, there's a lot of good reasons. First of all, everybody forgets that there's a, there's a lot of uncertainty in how people are going to use your devices. And so if you connect uh, that data back to the mothership, as it were, you can see the difference between what they said they were going to do and your voice of customer and then what they actually do in the field and make refinements quickly and efficiently. And the next step is when things go wrong, which they inevitably do from time to time, it, your service organization can be much more efficient if you can get real data and you, often you can address issues proactively or you can address issues very quickly without having to send a tech in the field, which is better for everybody. And for hospitals, we're very interested in consistent uh, uh, clinical execution, having a tool that they can use internally to uh, to assure alignment with all of the uh, the standard procedures they've developed is really important for them as well. And, and Scott, do you, are you seeing people talking about the desires of the clinical care organization uh, in that area? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the uh, the interest of having an organization have an internal initiative to be great on their own is is a better motivation than than big brother leaning over their shoulder and, and pounding on them, but at some level it's the same thing. How do you, how do you get to be a great organization? you got to have data. Uh, so now shifting to the home, so you've got a, all sorts of interesting applications. Diabetes is sort of the, uh, the one of the leading reasons why people do this. They want to monitor their blood sugar over time and the results of their, their dietary changes and their, uh, and their, their dosing with diabetes or their uh, insulin dosing and uh, also medication compliance. There's a number of applications that are very interesting and useful uh, if you have uh, connectivity. Uh, and there's a certain class of those ones where there's piles of data, megabytes and megabytes every day where you're looking at heart rates or other waveforms, brain waves or sleep patterns or so on, that uh, uh, there's, there's immense power in putting that data up on the network, allowing anonymous comparison with other, other uh, patients or, or people and uh, and opening up interesting business models that way. And if you can connect that data to a patient record that also allows portability, allows the patient to be having a greater sense of power, which is a, a big trend. So that's a, a very important as well. Thanks, Scott. Uh, that's, uh, that, that gives a good insight into some of the motivations and, and I know you've discussed many others as well. When we're starting to make that connection uh, to the network, um, Sal, we've talked a lot about uh, the implications of doing that, uh, how that's different from a traditional, um, less connected uh, device. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about what you've observed there? Everyone's used to dealing with the electrical and physical characteristics as regulatory applies, but now we really have to deal with informational characteristics as well. Normally it's not the kind of thing we think about from an individual standpoint, but understanding that we now have a lot of individuals on the network, HIPAA, FDA cybersecurity, CFR, Part 20, 21, Part 11, uh, these all apply. And it's important to understand that we need to address these and we need to address them up front. Uh, addressing them later is far too difficult. The other thing that was alluded to was how we have a marketing channel or a usage channel, and I don't mean marketing in a spam way, but getting real information out and collecting it back. This is not information, that's HIPAA information or PHI. So we really want to understand how to segregate that. It's really it's important to make that separation? Well, I think it is because where you have marketing information, you don't want that encumbered by HIPAA or other regulatory issues that really don't apply. 
but we do need to deal with the PHI in an appropriate way. And we want to make sure that we understand how to segregate that so we can deal with the information in the right way. The other thing is that in terms of distribution, um, as previously on the Tinder app, it, it's normal distribution to go through an app store or the Google Play Store or whatever, but there are also some other paths as um, Starfish accomplished through the tinnitus distribution where uh, the encumbrances of going through an app store don't necessarily apply and you can deal with them in a different way. A bit of novel thinking and, and other possibilities uh, really help there. Yeah, it makes a big difference in how you get out there. Okay, great. Thanks, Al. And so then if, if we talk about the, uh, the device itself, that uh, if we remember our definition of digital health, it's connecting the device to the network. So talking about the de device itself, um, uh, Kenneth McCallum, uh, Kenneth, we've talked a lot about We've been working on medical devices for a very long time, and connecting them isn't totally new. But what are your what are your observations in this uh, current world? It used to be that uh, your device needed the sensing capabilities, the computational capabilities, user interface, uh, and possibly communication, all in one package, and that had a certain uh, cost burden. For instance, if you wanted to, uh, you know, to have some technical portal to your device. Uh, there must be a really good reason, uh, otherwise it, you know, it feels a little bit like a luxury. Now, with everyone having a phone or a tablet, um, some of those aspects, whether it's computational power, user interface even, even sensing to some extent, um, can be, and communication, can be moved uh, into that device, uh, which has some interesting architectural uh, aspects which uh, can cost reduce, size reduce, uh, the device, um, which, which is changing things quite considerably. And so then there's, there's part of that is getting the data from the device onto these you know, pervasively available platforms. We, we've looked at some different ways of doing that. Yeah, so uh, again, in the old days you might have a, a GPRS modem or something in the device or a direct Ethernet port. Uh, now uh, we can Bluetooth in either through um, uh, Bluetooth Low Energy, which is becoming uh, more common now, uh, with tablets and phones. Uh, we can go through the audio channels either directly with the analog ones or uh, through Bluetooth again. Um, uh, and so the, the nice thing is that that's pretty inexpensive to implement uh, on the actual physical part of the device. So we've seen some of the motivations uh, for, uh, for being part of digital health, getting your device connected. Um, it can provide uh, help with compliance. Um, it also gives access to some novel uh, business models. Uh, the regulatory challenges, we heard, they're real, uh, um, but very tractable, s similar to the uh, rest of the medical device uh, environment they're used to, to working with. Um, connecting the device itself is, uh, is a manageable, uh, you know, generally solved problem uh, that can uh, be addressed in all sorts of innovative, innovative ways as required. And finally, the essential design and engineering of the product, the development, and making sure you develop the right device and develop, develop it well. Uh, is the, the same interesting challenge that it always has been, but uh, it's, it's something uh, that we enjoy doing and it's uh, a big part of this digital health 